Hello, naturalists. So I hope you all enjoyed a nice long weekend and maybe you had your first day of school today. If so, I hope it was awesome possum and I hope you had a lot of fun, whether it was in person or on the computer, either way. Now, I've been taking a lot of nature walks lately and using my owl eyes to notice tons of fungi. Now, fungi could be yeast or mold, but I'm not talking about either of those. I'm talking about our little mushroom friends. Have you been noticing tons of mushrooms in your nature neighborhood? It's that time of year. They're out and they are super cool to study. So fungi are really interesting and super cool to learn about. Now, fungi, like plants and animals, have a eukaryotic cell. Give that word a try, eukaryotic, nice. But unlike plants, our fungi don't produce chlorophyll and they don't eat through photosynthesis. Instead, they eat through decomposition or being a parasite. So they're a little bit different from our plants and right now they are out and about. Now I found these two examples of mushrooms just right next to me in my backyard. A nice little puffball mushroom and this one this one's been nibbled on for sure. So not only are mushrooms cool to look at, but they're also really important in our nature neighborhoods as a source of food for critters. Did you see all those little nibble marks on this mushroom? So our mushrooms have different parts, just like animals and plants do. And let's see. This one's pretty decent. We can use this one. It's a little ripped up. It's not featuring all of its parts, but we'll get the general idea. So this top part of our mushroom right here is the mushroom cap. Just like you might wear a cap on your head. Perfect. It's a mushroom cap. Perfect for your head. Perfect to learn about. Now underneath the cap, your mushroom has gills. Now, usually when we think of gills, we think fish and those gills that they use to breathe underwater. But these gills actually protect the spores of a mushroom, which is how a mushroom makes more mushrooms. So do you notice those gills underneath? They're really, ooh, they're delicate, gentle hands, but they're really cool to touch and look at up close. And you can take a spore print using the gills we did that in another video, but I might do another video of a, of a mushroom spore print just because it's so fun to do. And then underneath the gills and the cap, this one's a little broken, but your mushroom has a stem or a stalk. So that's this part right here, just like the trunk of a tree, just like the stem of a plant. Now, sometimes, depending on how grown up your mushroom is, you might notice a really thin little piece of mushroom right around the stalk or stem, and that is the skirt of the mushroom. So mushrooms have caps, just like we do, and they also wear skirts, just like we might wear skirts. Now, if we got down further, if this wasn't as destroyed and decomposed as it is, we would see the bulb of the mushroom, so the bottom part that's in the ground, and then we might even see what looks like little root hairs coming out of the bulb. Those are the mycelium. You see those all the time under rotting logs. It's a whole network of connections just from one mushroom. So those are the important parts of our mushroom, and today, because I've been noticing so many of these friends around, I'm gonna go on a nature walk, collect some mushrooms, and then I'm gonna bring them back and sort them. Now, of course, when we're collecting our mushrooms, we are gonna use our mantra of be safe, be kind, be gentle. 
gentle hands when you touch. Make sure you're not collecting too many. And then once we're done sorting and noting and observing, we're gonna bring them out to our gratitude rock or our gratitude log and give them as an offering back to the chipmunks and the squirrels and all the little critters who might eat them. So let's go on a mushroom hunt. All right, I found some mushrooms in the backyard, some fungi. So these little mushrooms are just starting to emerge. You can see they're not very tall yet. And my guess is on at least one of these, we might get to see the skirt of the mushroom because it's just barely starting to grow. Now, this little mushroom seems to be everywhere. There's some more. Some more there. They're all over. So I'm going to harvest just one of these mushrooms for our sorting because there's plenty growing around and I feel like I can be safe, kind, and gentle by just collecting one mushroom. All right, so I'm ready to collect. This is the one I've chosen, and I'm gonna show you just how I collect it so that I can get the whole mushroom and be safe, kind, and gentle. Now, grown-ups watching, mushrooms are safe for us to touch, but I typically have kids wash their hands after touching a mushroom just to really reinforce mushroom safety and make sure we talk about how some mushrooms could make us sick, some mushrooms are okay, but all of them are safe to touch. I just like to do that little reinforcement after with, hey, let's wash our hands real quick and just make sure they're clean. So when I'm harvesting my mushroom, I wanna come way, way down, move anything out of the way. Oh, oh, there's a tiny little friend growing with it. All right, I'm gonna try to just harvest the big one. So I'm gonna move the soil out of the way and I'm going to, let me see if I can show you. There we go, dig kind of deep, try and get the whole bulb of the mushroom Let's see how I did. Oh, look at that, everybody. Oh, let's put it down. All right, so that's exactly what I'm talking about. The bulb is right there, and you can see, you can see some moss attached, but also some little mycelium down there as well. All right, we're gonna add this to the collection, see if we can find some more fungi. All right, I stumbled on some more fungi, but this one looks like it has been completely destroyed by some critter. So cool to see. There's another piece, just how much critters love to eat these mushrooms. All right, we're coming along the nature trail. This is one of the more mossy spots in my backyard. So I wonder if I'll spot, oh, I got one. There's a fungus among us. There it is. There's another fungi growing back here. Oh my gosh, look at that moss, everybody. Oh, oh my gosh, I wanna take a nap out here. This is like a little soft carpet. Okay, back to our fungus. So here's another little fungi growing. Let's see if I can safely harvest it. Oh. It was already harvested. There's another good one to add to our sorting collection. All right, naturalists, I'm back from my fungi walk. I collected a couple of samples from my backyard, and then I have a couple that I preserved and that I use when I go out teaching, and I'm gonna sort them a little bit. Now, what's fun about this is you can sort them any way that you want to. Let me show you a couple of the things I bring with me when I do a mushroom sorting hunt. So mushrooms, of course, but you find those out in the wild. And then I like to bring with me this really beautiful book, Amateur Naturalist by Gerald Durrell. This just helps inspire me. I love looking at pictures of nature 
and coming up with ideas for collections, coming up with ideas for nature walks. So this is just a fun way to kind of get my brain juices flowing and get some cool ideas. But this page, me oh my, look at that. Look at the colors. Those beautiful mushrooms just make me feel inspired. Ready to do some mushroom studying. Now, I also bring with me nature notebook, of course. I have my sketch of a mushroom that I did a while ago, right here on the front page. And then I have one of my doing what scientists do pages, ready to take some new notes and observations. You can get this right on my Google resources page. I've got them ready to print out and they're fantastic to add to your nature notebook. So I have my inspiration, I have my own nature notebook, and then I just bring a couple of bandanas, pieces of cloth. This is a cool one. Can you tell what the pattern is? It's mushrooms. It's perfect for mushroom sorting. So I bring a couple of these so I can sort my mushrooms and that's really it. Now, I think I'm gonna sort my mushrooms. I think I'm gonna sort them on mushrooms with a stalk or a stem versus shelf mushrooms. So have you ever noticed those mushrooms growing out of a tree like a shelf? I've got a couple of those as preserved samples. So I'm gonna sort one cloth is gonna have mushrooms with a stalk or a stem and the other cloth is gonna be mushrooms that grow as a bracket mushroom or a shelf mushroom. So let me show you what I do. All right, naturalists. So I have my mushrooms all laid out here. I have my beautiful inspiration. And then I have one, two sorting bandanas. So I'm gonna sort these up real quick and show you what it looks like. Alrighty, so on my mushroom bandana, I sorted all the mushrooms that have stems or stalks. And then on my red bandana, I sorted all the shelf mushrooms. So we have this big one, this artist conch mushroom. We have this birch polypore, this tinder conch. They all grow right along the side of trees, kind of like a shelf. Now there's one left over, this puffball mushroom. Now, if you just look at it, it's hard to tell if it has a stalk or a stem, if it's a shelf mushroom, but it doesn't exactly look like these mushrooms. There's no shelf, there's no place where it would attach to a tree. And if we look underneath, there is in fact, somewhat of a tiny little stem or stalk down here. So I am gonna add it to my mushrooms with stalks or stems. All right, naturalists. So getting to know our local fungi a little bit better is that easy. Go out on your own nature walk, collect some fungi, remember to be safe, kind, and gentle with your collections. And don't collect too much, just collect what you'll use. Do some sorting, take some notes in your nature notebook, and learn a little bit more about the fungi in your nature neighborhood. Now, I'm gonna take the fungi that I gathered out back to my gratitude rock. I'm gonna give them back to mother nature, give them as an offering to the squirrels or chipmunks who live around here. But before I do that, I am going to sketch this little friend in my nature notebook, take some notes just so I can remember what I did and kind of have a log or a journal of what I did today. Charlie came over to say hello, say hi Charlie. So he's gonna help me bring the mushrooms back out to the gratitude log and I hope that you all go out and try your own mushroom sorting adventure. It can be really fun to get to know the fungi around you and stay curious. All right, naturalists, I'll see you next time.
Bye, everybody.